Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us for worship this morning from the sanctuary of St. John's United Methodist Church. Uh, here in the beginning, why don't you go ahead and take a moment and say hello to one another in the comments and uh, let us know where you are. Uh, we're happy to be able to join together this day in worship. It's always good to be together. Let us worship God. morning. Please join me in our call to worship. Praise be to God who rescues us and gives us the gift of life. Praise be to God who gives us the gift of creation. We celebrate the gifts of God as we sing and pray, acknowledging that we belong not only to ourselves, but to God. Praise be to God for the gift of our neighbor. Praise be to God who gives us the gift of community. We celebrate the gifts of God as we sing and pray, acknowledging that we are sustained and strengthened by the human family who surrounds us now and by all who have gone before. 
Praise be to God for the gift of hope. Praise be to God who gives us the gift of life eternal. We celebrate the gifts of God as we sing and pray, acknowledging that we are part of the whole creation which waits with eager longing for the revealing of the children of God. As children of God, woven into the very fabric of creation, connected to everything that is, we lift our hearts and voices to God. have to use your imaginations a bit, but if you do, you can actually see all the people who have gathered together online, here in the sanctuary, for this time of worship. And if we concentrate enough, we can see that that congregation is also family of God. We come now as family of God to join our hearts together, to pray for one another, to lift up our joys and to experience God's presence in the midst of our lives and the importance of one another in this family of God. Will you join me to pray?
Let us pray. Most high God, when we say that we are all debtors, all is the significant word. None of us is self-sufficient or self-made or self-actualized. We are debtors to one another. We live in relationship. We are not alone. For all on whom we depend and for all who depend on us, we lift our prayers this day. When our relationships malfunction, we can become isolated and alone. We pray this day for those who feel lonely and for healing and reconciliation in those relationships that have left us feeling alone. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And let our lives prosper and abound in relationship with you and with our neighbor. We offer our prayers in the name of our brother, Jesus, who is also the Christ. Amen. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you. Let us share with one another signs of Christ's peace.
Good morning. The lesson today is from the Hebrew Scriptures in Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 through 19a. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night, because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And I am stood beside him and said, I am the God of Abraham your father and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east, and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely God is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the first. The word of God for the children of God. Thanks be to God. Let, it let us take a moment to just breathe and enjoy the wondrous outdoors. Amen. If you are a kid, a youth, or a kid at heart, I invite you to join me for this time for Young Disciples. everyone. Have you ever heard the phrase hindsight is 2020? Now adults watching this part, you might obviously know what this means. So 2020 is perfect vision. So I have glasses. So I clearly do not have 2020 vision. Hindsight means looking behind. So when people talk about hindsight being 2020, they mean looking back on something that's already happened, usually you can see the picture a little bit better. So let's say you're looking, you're thinking about something that happened last year. Now, you're not necessarily feeling the same emotions that you're feel that you were feeling when it happened and you kind of know a little bit more about what was going on with other people involved or what was going on with you, how you might have been feeling, why you might have been feeling that. And so you can look at what happened and say, huh, I now see what was going on here and it's not what I thought it was when, I, when it was actually happening. 
So a lot of times, um, for example, with your parents, if they tell you to do something like a chore and you're just trying to do something you really want to do and have fun, you're like, oh my gosh, my parents are trying to like drive me crazy and they're doing it just because they want me to be doing chores and working like them instead of playing. But if you look back on it, it might be because they were really busy and they needed you to do something or you weren't doing something like maybe you needed to go outside for a little bit. You've been inside for a really long time. So in our Bible story today, we have somebody who kind of was like sleeping and having a dream and then suddenly was like, oh my gosh, God has been here all along. And that actually, the story actually reminds me of one of my favorite poems. It's called Footprints in the Sand. If you want, you can look it up. But basically, it's about this guy who's walking on a beach and he looks back with his hindsight and sometimes he sees two sets of footprints and sometimes he sees only one. And he's like, God, dude, my dude, why did you leave me alone? Because he's thinking clearly the single footprints are mine. And God looks at him and goes, whoa, buddy, uh-uh. The single footprints were when I carried you through the bad times. And so it's kind of like that. You look back on something and you realize that God's always been there. So that's kind of what I take away from this Bible story today. Let's pray. Dear God, you are always with us. Sometimes in the moment, we feel so many emotions and we're distracted by other things and we don't realize it until after it's over and we think back, we look in our memories and we realize that you were there. This happens a lot. Please remind us that hindsight is usually better than looking at something in the moment and that you're always with us even if we can't see it. In your name we pray, amen. There's been a proliferation of entertaining quizzes and games and questionnaires on social media, which I think provides some respite from the hourly headlines and the redundant and exhausting debate. Uh, you can discover which movie character you most resemble <laughs> or what your 2020 campaign slogan would be if you just insert your last name and the last text that you sent. There are also travel lists where you get a score for all the places you've visited in your life with bonus po points if you've been to any of the 100 places you must visit before you die. <laughs> Haran was on no one's top 100 list. And Jacob would not have posted about his journey to Haran had it been on anyone's top 100 list. Because Jacob was on the run. He was on the run from his furious, older twin brother Esau whom he had cheated out of his inheritance Jacob was running and he just hoped to hole up and stay alive in Haran and, and maybe 
find a wife, since Haran was his ancestral home as well. But on his way, Jacob stops in a place that earns no points on any travel list. In fact, it doesn't even have a name. It's a random spot in the Canaanite desert and it's not very luxurious. It provides only stones for pillows and dirt for beds. And that's the place where Jacob drifts off and dreams about a ladder stretching from earth to heaven with the angels of God going up and down and up and down. It's an, an amazing sight out in the middle of nowhere. Now the angels didn't speak to Jacob, but I am does. God does. And despite Jacob's treachery, God assures Jacob of God's presence and blessing. And when Jacob woke up, that rock under his head was transformed into a sacred place. Surely, God is in this place, Jacob says, with reverential fear. The same God who had been with his family and his family's families, Jacob suddenly realizes is also in this place. Sometimes this, the surprise encounter with holy God in our now also discloses how God has been with us in all the relationships and the places and the circumstances that have shaped our now. And if we see that, it helps us to trust that God will be with us and with ours always. My friend Aaron is right now a candidate for a liver transplant. In the last year or so, he has been off the cliff so many times that that free fall has become more familiar as the abode of God to him than the solid rock at the top of the cliff. He knows that free fall so well now and the God who has gone, gone over the cliff with him that in a recent free fall when doctors relayed great uncertainty to him and to his family that, that brought Aaron's mother to tears. It, it was Aaron who said, Mom, where's your faith? Aaron had been here before and God had been with him. And sure enough, Aaron crawled back to the top and continues to wait in each next moment like a person who has discovered that God is in this place. Jacob names that place where he awoke Bethel, which means house of God, that nowhere becomes somewhere because God is there. In Wendell Berry's novel entitled Jaber Crow, the main character says, the names of many snares and dangers have been made known to me but I have seen them only in looking back. 
Often I have not known where I was going until I was already there. I've made my... I have had my share of desires and goals, but my life has come to me or I have gone to it mainly by way of mistakes and surprises. I am an ignorant pilgrim crossing a dark valley. And yet, for a long time, looking back, I have been unable to shake off the feeling that I have been led. Make of that what you will, he says. There are lots of places we can find ourselves. I mean, top of the cliff, over the cliff, grieving and celebrating opening schools and delaying a while longer for safer days and struggling just to pay our bills or buying a voc- vacation home uh, surrounded by family or isolated in an ICU you know raising rambunctious children and and caring for a mom whose occasional smile confirms that she still recognizes us. There are places that require us to dig in and bed down for the long haul with what sometimes feels like a rock for a pillow. And yet it is often in engaging every one of these moments that we discover to our utter surprise that every place is holy. Every place is important because you are there and God is revealed as one who is also always there. Any of these places can be a Bethel, a house of God. Holy ground is wherever God stands beside us. And God stands beside us everywhere. Jacob's story reminds us that we will all visit far more than 100 places in our lives. But whether it is the end of the earth or the end of our street, every place is awesome because God is always there. Thanks be to God. Amen.
on your screens right now, you will see all the different ways that you can give to St. John's. If you believe that St. John's United Methodist Church is a place where God is at work, we invite you to be generous in giving to support that work of God in this place and through the ministries and the people and the congregation and, and all the offerings that we uh, give uh, will support uh, those vital and important ministries in the name of God. I invite you now to join me as we pray, asking for God to bless the gifts that we give. Let us pray. We offer our gifts this day as a people of dreams and visions. May our gifts be blessed by you, O God, that they might broaden the horizon and hope of your children. Amen.
we experience the Spirit of God most vividly in uh, relationships with those who walk beside us every day. You know, through our, our parents and our guardians, our partners, our children, our teachers and friends and students and our co-workers and, and our church. How is God walking with you in these committed and important relationships? How is God nurturing you through those specific relationships? And how are you providing nourishment to those who are in that web of relationships with you. An act of faith this week might be time well spent just assessing who we are in that web of relationships on which we depend. And also, let us be strengthened by God to give all that we are to those relationships and to accept all that we receive from those relationships with humility and with thanksgiving. As we offer our commitments and our hearts to God, will you join to sing our hymn of faith? Let us sing. Let's go from this time of worship to live by the Spirit who shapes us, claims us, and offers us a future with hope, fulfillment, and joy. And let us go to serve as though the world is part of God and part of us. Let us go bound together by faith to build the kingdom of God 
for which all of creation is waiting. Go in God's love and grace, God's peace and power. Amen.